to those who found their partners in their 30s. How seriously did you have to take dating? Depending on what you mean. Not seriously at all in terms on how much time I spent looking for someone. In fact I was pretty sure I'd be single forever, and I was fine with it. I absolutely set my bar where I actually wanted it, and stopped wasting any time dating guys that had any qualities I didn't like. After a decade of trying to make things work with losers or men who took advantage of me, or men that just weren't great for me, it was a relief to just say back quote actually I just don't like this guy, and refusing his second date or texts, or whatever, and if he made an offensive comment. It was nice to just be done instead of struggle on if I should overlook it, or whatever I used to do. I married in my 20s. But that's the same perspective I took in dating, and it's why it flabbergasts other women when I talk about my dating history, that I've only dated genuinely good men. The kind that I would gladly want my friends to date, if they were single and compatible. Be choosy. This is your life we are talking about. You don't have to settle, because being alone is better than dealing with a man's bullshit, or trying to change them. And I took that cue from my own parents. There's so much love. And so much. So 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 much resentment. And that's simply not a life I ever wanted to live. Not at all. I would go on dates too. 3x slash y- I only had one online dating profile, and would only check it a couple times a month. By contrast my husband was on all the dating apps. I think my checklist was pretty simple. Be stably employed. And not financially reliant on anyone else. Having kids wasn't a deal breaker. But I got one too many guys who couldn't shut up about their ex-wives. So kids weren't exactly a bonus. The hard criteria was clicking with me. It's something I can't qualify or describe. Edit. And for the guys who had kids. They must be involved with their kids in a positive way. I will not tolerate deadbeats. Close bracket. That clicking is the hardest part for me. Most men around me are financially stable slash employed. Good slash acceptable looks with a wide range of good slash alright personalities. So in theory at least half of them meet the standards for me. Unfortunately there hasn't been any click slash growing chemistry slash ease to be with like ever. So I'm still single. I feel like from age 32 to 35 I was dating online like a mad woman. Sometimes three dates a week. Phone screening. Almost like a job. Ironically I fell in love with someone I didn't meet on the apps, and he has never been on dating apps. How did you guys meet? The universe is funny sometimes. We met at an art workshop. I wish I could say I took it lightly and had fun, but in reality it was more like a part-time job. Did you have a strict criteria? How long did it take, and did you find your perfect partner? Not who you're applying to. But I viewed it as a job too. I probably was on apps for 5 to 6 years total, with relationships in between, before finding my current partner. Who should be the one? One point to note, is that while I do want marriage, I don't want kids. So my timeline as slash was a little more flexible. A comment I've left before, I went on my final, first date with an attitude of indifference too. I also started treated dating apps like a job which I think helped me after many years on them. I was really intentional with my time on dating apps, maybe spent like 15 minutes on them per day, but I did that, so I could consistently log on, and go through my 6 likes for the day. I set those limits for myself, because I was either spending way too long pointlessly analyzing profiles, or I was getting overwhelmed, and not going on the app as a result. I chatted minimally on the apps, before moving to in-person dates. I went on dates, even if I wasn't excited about the person from app chatting. My now partner was actually from one of those unexciting app chats. I didn't want to go on the date really, just like I don't want to go into work half the time. But I still went. My friends who have been successful more recently, I, E, in this dumpster fire dating market, also viewed it as a job, going on a minimum number of dates per week slash month and whatnot. Some people absolutely just get lucky, and even finding a partner following the above does come down to luck. But just like a job search, you usually have to put effort in. Are there people who magically get connected to amazing jobs? Yes. Is it common? No. I had a basic list of values slash behaviors that I wanted to see in a partner. Some books I found helpful, Facing Codependence Backslash Backslash by Pia Melody. 
How Not to Die Alone by Logan Uri. Backslash backslash the book talks about extreme independence as an offshoot of codependence and that applied to me. Not very. I was mid 30s and sterile. No biological clock. And I was happy single. So I figured I'd find someone or I wouldn't. And either way I'd be okay. I did find someone and he's wonderful. Same. I quit dating. Didn't care if I met someone or not. I met my husband randomly in a bar. After my long term relationship ended at 30, I had two people I was somewhat seeing, in succession. Not at the same time, before I got together with my now husband. Both were friends first. Both ghosted me after a few months, when they lost interest. I also was half-heartedly on dating apps, and I talked to a few people, but never met up with anyone from old. I very much wanted to be married. But I did not want kids. As for what I was looking for, I had a few basic deal breakers, like he couldn't be conservative, and couldn't want kids. But mostly I was just looking for someone who wanted to be in a partnership. To be on the same team with me. Someone who always treated me, and our relationship fairly. Since that was what broke my previous relationship, my husband was actually a friend I had in high school. We lost touch when we all moved away after graduation, but then reconnected in our 30s. I met my now fmk at 34. 5 and to me. I don't think it's really about hitting a target number of dates slash week, since that can lead to a lot of burnout and hopelessness. I think it's more about dating intentionally and finding balance. It's great to have high standards, and you should maintain them, but about the things that really matter, values, kindness, empathy, great communication skills, and you absolutely should drop menace app if they don't demonstrate those skills. But having strict criteria and looking for someone perfect is going to lead to a lot of disappointment emo. I randomly got back on the dating apps after staying off it for a year working on myself. All I wanted to see was how the dating scene was, and was not serious about it, since I was planning on moving out of the country this year. Matched with men. Chatted with some. Dropped out fast on some conversations cause they were liars, but didn't take it to heart, since I wasn't serious. And the first guy I decided to meet, is now my serious partner. Met my serious partner in the most unserious moment I've ever been in my dating life. I'm 35. Prior to that I've never really been serious on apps. Only seriously dated men I knew in real life, except for one. I had zero dates until the man who is now my partner. About a year into online dating. I set the bar very high and nobody even made it past day one of talking except for him. Either. I knew exactly what I wanted, and exactly what I didn't want. I had a take no prisoners approach, because I didn't want to waste my time or anyone else's. If he wasn't it, he wasn't it, and I wasn't going to spend any time trying to make him it. Imo, at any age, finding someone you're genuinely compatible with for the long term isn't easy. It is like finding a needle in a haystack. I just decided to burn the haystack. HTTPS slash slash www burned haystack dating com slash blog and see if there were any needles left. Lol. I was fine with being single over having another bad relationship or even a mediocre relationship. So the risk of not finding anyone didn't really scare me. I did this before I realized it was actually a thing in terms of dating methods. But I like the imagery. No guarantees of it working for anyone else. But it did help me sort through the options. Quickly dismiss the people who would not work for me. And ultimately find someone really wonderful to share life with. I love this burned haze tack approach. It's very intentional. I dropped apps and went offline. Not wanting children deletes the urgency of a timeline. So that made things easier. I wasn't taking dating seriously. And wasn't looking to date when I met my husband. I was just doing my thing. How did you meet him? Give us hope. Hobby group meetups. Turns out we had a few mutual acquaintances. But I was just doing things to get out of my house and meet people in general. I had been around the group for a few years before we crossed paths. I also met totally nice and cute guys out at art scene stuff. I wish I could say I took it lightly. What I can say though is that I had a lot of fun. It took me by surprise when I ended up falling for someone I'd been working with and had firmly ruled out. 
It worked out though, together for 16 years. Two kids and married. I would suggest taking it as lightly as possible. Trying to have fun doing things you love with people with similar interests, and thinking of a plan B just in case, mine was the possibility of the solo route. Though I didn't love the idea, I felt I had some control, less pressure that way. What's much more important than the quantity of dates is the quality. Make sure you are only going out with people who actually fit your criteria. Don't waste time in such relationships. Remain emotionally available. I met my husband in 2018, when I was 29, but we stayed acquaintances and didn't start dating until I was 30 a year later. We got married in 2022. Our relationships got serious fast, but he's the only partner I've ever lived with. I just kept really focused on what I wanted. How seriously I took it depends on how you define seriously. I had a general process I followed for the old component for managing matches and chats. I also dedicated a not insignificant time towards old and meeting people I roll, not app strangers, each week. So I would categorize myself as an active data. I didn't put a ton of expectations on the process though. I didn't have a goal or expectation of meeting someone in a particular time frame. I didn't give myself quotas for number of dates per month. I didn't judge the success of dates by if they resulted in a LTR. I didn't try to fit square pegs in to round holes just to feel like I had been successful in the dating process. I was quite serious in that I kept going with the apps. Maybe two dates a month. It took me a year and a half to find my husband. Which isn't bad as we met during COVID. But yes. Keep persevering with the apps. It really is a numbers game. And remember. You only need one to go well. I was 31, had been on dating apps for a little over a year, and was taking a break when I met my husband. I met him through a friend. She was dating his brother. It was like a full-time job. Chatting to multiple per week. One or two new dates a month. Four years. I didn't take it super seriously, but I spent a lot of time going on a bunch of dates to see if I could find chemistry in addition to things in common. I felt like this was slightly lacking during my first go around on dating apps, so I treated it kind of like an experiment with zero expectations. It was pretty time consuming, but I ended up finding someone awesome. I took it seriously, in that I was talking to a lot of people. But this was in summer of 2020, so I was being pretty selective about who I'd actually meet. I wasn't sure about kids, assumed I wouldn't have any. I've never dated a guy who wanted kids, but definitely looking for something serious with marriage as the end goal. I think it took about 6 weeks or so to find my so. I had only met up with one other guy, had plans with another, but I cancelled on him to plan another date with my so. I think we chatted online for like 4 to 5 days before meeting in person. I dky but I've always had a really easy time on dating apps. There's a sweet spot with men where you can tell by the profile whether or not they're serious, like they have to put effort into their profile, but not too much, or they just seem like a serial dater who will never settle down. Just had to be super clear and follow through on what I'd accept and what I wouldn't eventually landed on no more giving guys I felt wishy-washy about a chance just to be nice. And taking early signs of yucky behavior seriously, like programmers bragging about income or a guy paying for a drink, when I explicitly said I got it, you won't overrule me, and get a second date. For the app I used I did have to pay extra to chat with more guys at a time. Giving room to talk to the one I was actually super into. I could have been more ruthless about unmatching for sure. When not in relationships, I was going on dates 1-2-3 times a week. Probably. I took it pretty seriously. The analogy I made was that if I wanted to run a marathon, I wouldn't just go out for runs when I felt like it and then just see what happened. I'd be out there training. So that's the attitude I took into dating. I worked on myself a lot. I worked on figuring out my maladaptive dating patterns. I knew what I wanted in a partner. But... That eventually led me to a place where I was overthinking everything and had honestly forgotten how to have fun with the process. It was like I was trying to solve a crime or something. 
Just thinking about everything and all the possibilities, but not in a fun way. I lucked out and met my fiancé and things were just easy and fun. He actually had some things that I was against. He wasn't sure he was going to stay in the area and he was a rhyme ready for a relationship with the right person guy. Which had always been I think I want a relationship but I don't in my experience. Those were both things on the forefront of my mind early in our courtship. But they ended up being okay in the long run. I took it very seriously in the sense that I wasn't gonna waste my time just to have somebody. So I was alone for quite some time and met my now husband in the wild. Still a struggle at times. Just to share a life. But at least our values align and he isn't a fuck boy. I took it very seriously and went on easily 200 plus dates between ages 26 to 32. Mostly from dating apps. I was very clear on what I wanted but I struggled to find it despite meeting a ton of men. It's interesting the way things turned out. It was only once I listened to my intuition and quit the apps that I met my partner a few months later on Reddit. By accident. Haha. <laughs> After this whole experience, I can confidently say I think it's a lot more about the quality of dates and dating in a way that's sustainable and emotionally healthy for you rather than the pure quantity of dates. Being very clear on what you're looking for and trusting yourself is really key to filtering well in dating. On Reddit, I'm curious. Would you mind explaining your Reddit love story? I didn't. Really. I liked having short-lived relationships. If you could even really call them relationships. My sister just happened to be having her shower tiled by some guy and she thought we would like each other. She has never done or said such a thing and she set us up. We did click pretty instantly and I dk. I just felt like I totally want to be with this guy forever. And he said the same about me. It felt effortless with my now fiancé. I feel like that's kind of an old school way to meet someone, but it was just 4 years ago. I'm 31 and want to take dating more seriously, but reading these comments exhausted me. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Hatter I'm about to turn 30 and feel the same way. Girl. It was like having a second job lol. I was going on 2-4 to four dates a week with some breaks from heartaches, misalignments and rejection. It was easy to tell which ones wouldn't work, which was around close to 60 to 80 dates maybe in a span of 2 years haha. <laughs> Gosh even typing, that number makes me feel exhausted. Found my now partner the day I decided to give up haha. <laughs> Stay strong. It really isn't easy. And not going on dates, and giving up versus going on dates, and not giving up. Which one will get you closer to what you want? Gotta have to do it. Wishing you the best. How did you meet your partner? I would say go on very few dates. It's exhausting. It's not fun after a while. Be as fussy and clear and unapologetic about your needs from the get go. Set the bar extremely high because as you go on, everyone shows imperfections you couldn't anticipate. Dating was a part time job for sure. I wish I'd gone on fewer dates as it was time consuming and disheartening. Luckily, or not, I'm picky f, I only met one weirdo. I took it pretty lightly and didn't use online dating. I had fun and met a lot of people going out or through friends. I wasn't sure if I wanted kids or to get married, but now I'm happily chilled free with my husband. The way in which I took it seriously was making sure that my schedule had free time in it to actually go on dates. My schedule now would make that much harder. Beyond that, I focused on short gut check conversations in app, like a few messages. Nothing while just making sure that they seemed to be normal and responsive, and then moved quickly to coffee. But yeah, being willing to cut things off with folks early on is super helpful if it's not a ref yes it's a no. And time spent talking to someone on an app is better allocated meeting them in person. That said, between my 20s and 30s I specifically moved to a place with better dating prospects for me. Your environment can definitely impact how hard it is 